Okay, welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling. Today's topic is factor demand. And this is yet another topic that I'm afraid excites the AP people more than it excites me, but uh, it is a legitimate topic. Um, and the usual f focus is on labor demand. And um, the thinking is that let's say the work the firm obtains labor in a competitive market. So what that means is we have the wage rate here and N is the amount of labor. It has perfectly elastic labor supply. That's labor supply. That means the supply of labor to the firm, it can get as much or as little as it wants at the same wage rate. This is labor supply, not labor demand. So it's labor demand we assume is downward sloping. That is, if if the market wage were low, it would hire more labor. If the market wage is high, it will hire less labor. So where does that labor demand come from? It comes from setting the marginal revenue product of labor equal to the wage. <clears throat> so what's this marginal revenue product thingy? Well, if it's a competitive firm in, this, in the output market, this is, com this is com perfectly competitive in the input market, now, if it's competitive in the output market, then price equals marginal revenue. And that makes things a little bit simpler, because then marginal revenue product is equal to price times marginal product. Uh, otherwise, if not competitive in the pro in the competitive however you spell that in the output market then we would do marginal revenue product equals marginal revenue times marginal product and marginal revenue is less than price if it's not competitive. So, marg so marginal revenue product would sort of not be as high uh, as it would in this instance. But let's focus on this one. Um, okay, so marginal product the thinking is that at some point Let's say labor, and we'll do marginal product. Uh, maybe it increases a little for a little bit, but eventually we think it declines. This is our diminishing returns picture. So we get to a point where um, delta Q, the amount of increase in output for labor, that's marginal product, uh, declines. That's anywhere from here forward. We're seeing lower and lower <coughs> increments of output from each additional labor. If, if, if we cross this line, we were having negative marginal product. Workers getting in each other's way. We don't necessarily cross that line. But uh, you can imagine you know, if you have a lawn mowing service and you keep adding workers, uh, you, know, you can only uh, increase your, the speed at which you mow a lawn by so much. Eventually, they're just you know they're just sitting around or they're not uh, you know, they're just doing a little bit of mowing each and they're not contributing a lot of marginal product. So we have this diminishing return story 
for marginal product declining, and that in turn is what gives us our downward sloping labor demand because um, to get us to hire the first worker because the marginal product is high, we might be okay with a high wage. But as, <coughs> as we keep adding more workers, their marginal product is declining. And since their marginal product is declining, their marginal revenue product, which is just the price, which is constant times the marginal product, the price is constant because it's perfectly competitive in the output market. So you have this declining marginal revenue product. Marginal product is declining, therefore marginal revenue product is declining, therefore you have, you have your downward sloping labor demand. Um, Okay, so we started this by saying something about perfectly elastic labor supply. Well, what if our firm is not a perfect competitor in the labor market? That is called not being perfectly competitive in the labor market. It's called having some, I have a hard time spelling this, so monopsony power. That's the equivalent of monopoly power, but when you're the buyer. Okay, so a monopolist is the only seller, a monopsonist is the only buyer. You don't have to be the only buyer in the labor market um, to have some monopsony power. What that means is that instead of a horizontal labor supply, you have an upward sloping labor supply. That is, in order to have ad get additional workers, you have to have a higher wage. So this is what the labor market looks like for somebody a firm with monopsony power. Um, it has to raise wages in order to hi hire more workers. Uh, so like a, a local hospital that wants to hire more nurses at some point is going to have to raise the wage that it pays nurses. Um, so we get, that's so it has an upward sloping labor supply not downward sloping. And I think that's pretty much all we need to know at this point about factor demand.